kid. Seriously. So, Mark, it's one of the most exciting times of forever for me. We have a new season of True Detective, and we both just watched the first two episodes, which premiered two hours ago. And now we are uh, we're, we're staying up late for me because I'm on Central Time, and it's almost 11, which is well past my bedtime. But we got to talk about these because they just happened, and it is a new season. As always, it's an anthology, so it's not connected to any of the previous seasons. And this is a return to the familiar format of season one that was very successful versus season two. This is a mystery, a detective story as far as uh, a murder, a murder kidnapping. And uh, just so everyone knows, we're not even going to bother doing non-spoilers. This is going to be all spoiler talk on the first two episodes of True Detective. So just don't listen if you haven't seen them. But we meet uh, Marshal Ali's, which I always say wrong, so I'm sorry. Uh, Marshal Ali? That sounds better. I am a Marshal, I think. Marshal Ali? There we go. Uh, but I'm just going to call him Wayne because he plays Detective Wayne Hayes in this, who we meet over three different time spans. We meet him in 1980, where he is a de- uh, state police detective partnered with Stephen Dorff. And <laughs> good to see he's still around. Yeah, and looking very, uh, looking a lot like Dennis Quaid with his wig or whatever was going on there. But they are partners, and they are investigating the disappearance of two middle school to high school age kids, a brother and a sister, who rode their bikes off and and went missing. We also j- jump forward to 1990, where Ali is doing a deposition about the events, very similar to season one, which we saw with McConaughey and Harrelson having to be questioned by detectives about a previous case they had worked on. And then we also go to 2015, where Ali is being interviewed by a TV <coughs> show uh, that focuses on true crime about the case as well. We learn that Ali, uh, Ali has dementia, especially in his his 2015 form. In 2000 or in 1990, it is mentioned that he might be having some memory problems as well. We do end up finding that the the son has been murdered, the daughter is missing, and in 1990 is found to still be alive because they find her fingerprint in connection with a robbery. We have a few different suspects that we're looking at, but it, it, it's a real. I mean, the aesthetic, the look, everything about it looks like they are going heavy against the criticism of season two and trying to recreate the magic of season one. Mark, you just watched these episodes. Give me your initial feedback. My initial feedback was trying to remember, was season one when we were watching the episodes, did it always feel as long and as ponderous too, as this one did at times? Because there were scenes that just, just drug. And I, I, a couple times I found myself, my attention wandering a little bit with, how long things were playing out. And um, I didn't recall the first season having, you know, feeling that, that long and, and kind of ponderous, but that could just be that it's been, you know, eight, nine years or whatnot since the last time. So I don't, I, I wasn't, I, I, I spent some time trying to, you know, comparing it that to the that first season. Um, well, that, well, that's interesting. That's an interesting topic, I think, in and of itself, because I thought about that a little too, especially, I mean, even the opening credits seem like they just tried to do an exact recreation of the initial credits with a different song. I mean, season two, yeah. it was kind of similar, but they were deviating a lot more. And and I spent a lot of the first episode kind of thinking like, this is the exact same. I mean, you have him, you have the time jumping, you have him being questioned about a, a disappearance of, you know, young women, you know, young, young people. It felt very similar. Um, and what I kind of realized at the end of season one is, is I have to divorce myself from the, how does it compare to season one? Because I don't think that's fair to do because for me, season one is my favorite anything movie tv show whatever i i love it i think it's near perfect besides one minor complaint i have about it so if i if i'm gonna sit and just go well they did this in season one i'm always going to be disappointed yeah so i tried to divorce myself from that and i think what i ended up finding is i didn't have problems where i felt thought it felt long or over and overdrawn and maybe i was comparing it to season two where i really felt that problem where i felt that that was 
season two was so overly complicated too with the inner workings of these different cities and political agencies that I just got confused. I, I didn't run into that problem. And what I found in this one is that I, I found myself really caught up in trying to figure out the mystery of who our suspects are and who they could be. And, and that focused me enough that I never really got bored. I do think mm-hmm. the difference between season one and season two, because I th- or season one and season three, from what we've seen, is that you're just not going to get a character that's as initially as fascinating as Rust Cole and McConaughey's character there. Like, we hadn't seen a character yeah. like that, so... I think if you, he, he probably had some speeches and scenes that were just as long, but he was so unique that I think he, I personally was captivated by it and drawn mm-hmm. in. And I don't think Ali, Ali doesn't have wow you speeches like that in this. But the thing I noticed about him is, is, is he can do so much with a look and not a lot of dialogue that I don't think mm-hmm. McConaughey would have been capable of. And definitely Vince Vaughn, Colin Farrell, and especially yeah. Taylor Kitsch were not able to accomplish in the other seasons. So I am I am optimistic about this, and I really spent a lot of time thinking about who the the, the murderer is already. I really liked this. It, he's fantastic. And, and like you said, it, you know, especially in kind of being sort of the anti-Russ Cole in that everything about him is not what he's saying. It's about the just a look about how he's carrying himself. I, you know, yeah, ob- there's the obvious parallels in the similarities from first season. One of the things I, I think I'm actually kind of excited about, and I think I'm I'm going to like about this one more than season one, is that the mystery in this one already feels more like an actual crime. And it, it, it feels like this is an actual real world cold case whereas in season one okay you have these women being strung up with all these elaborate uh, you know decorations and ritual and the, the whole season is having to kind of build to the reveal of this killer who has to be some kind of otherworldly monster in order to you know make the, the climax for what has come before in, in which as a, as a true crime fan myself, I often get kind of annoyed with in these mysteries and when they make these you know killers out to be these more than human, brilliant, devious predators, when the reality is that they're almost always a bunch of sad, pathetic, you know, borderline idiots. Um, but this mystery has set itself up where it is a mystery, but it's less about, I, I think, almost the killer. It's almost less about who did it as opposed to where this girl is or the events that happened leading up to this crime. That's go, no, go ahead. Well, I, I was going to say that's interesting. Cause I have a little bit different perspective, especially with how you kind of, uh, you kind of ended that. See, to me, part of him, the, the killer in season one being supernatural and all that stuff is because it's really not about the the killer to me. What what to me that first season is about is about the fall and redemption of Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey. And everything else is kind of secondary to that. And they don't even really let you solve the crime on your own. Because I mean they do have there's one appearance of the killer before the the final scene in the second to last episode, and that's you know, him just mowing a lawn and they ask him a couple questions. So, you know, there might be someone out there who got it, but like they really didn't give you clues to be able to figure that out on your own. Where to me, this feels like an intentional, like we're going to present these characters to you and we're going to present you with clues and we're going to try to let you solve it almost in a, you know, murder on the Orient Express type way, which is, is I, I like, I, I like both obviously, but I'm excited about that because I feel like this is a, a crime I can actually solve this time. And that's what I ended up invested in more than, and as good as Ali is, I'm not, his family stuff isn't as interesting to me as the case stuff. That's what I found myself more hooked on, which is a little bit of a difference for me from the the last season. Yeah. see, Well, but for me, the first season wasn't about us trying to figure out who the killer was. Um, I mean, yeah, it's clearly about following the detectives on their redemption. But the way the crime and the way the story arc is built, 
it, it so hypes up the killer as being this sort of supernatural, sure, you know, mythological feature that any any sort of ending reveal was going to be a disappointment because that's just not how people are in real life. And and so for me, the you know. I don't think of season one as highly as you do because I think the ending fell so flat and, and I see more potential in this too. I also think too, that the benefit it looks like to this season is that we've had eight or nine years of quality, true crime stuff being put out and, you know, dealing with real murders, real unsolved crimes and having those kind of documentaries in sort of, you know, the ability to build a narrative around one crime that happened as opposed to a series of escalating crimes that you have to stop. So I, it, this feels, again, more in a pattern of that, more natural to me. And so I don't get as distracted by the wackiness of the Yellow King and, <laughs> oh, we had to hang her naked from a bridge with deer antlers on her head. So I'm really a, a, I'm excited about that. But, you know, otherwise... You know, the production values are terrific. The acting is all spot on. The dialogue is good. Um, That's the best old man makeup I've ever seen. Like, I, he looks like he's actually yeah. 65 or whatever he's supposed to be in 2015. Yeah, yeah, he does. Um, I like the theme of dealing with memory and how the jumping back and forth in time um, is is sort of conveying that essence of how memories get melded back and forth and you know we don't think of our history in a linear fashion necessarily so i think it's doing a really good job of of conveying that sort of feeling so i'm really excited about it overall i think it was really good uh i just was surprised at how slow it felt at times to me and and not remembering the first season feeling like that do you have any theories starting off on who it could be based on the characters we met well it's it's a little tough to say because I mean, first off, I think this murder, this case, is clearly patterned after the murder of the three boys in Robin Hood Hills in Arkansas that they did the documentaries Paradise Lost about. Yeah, I thought uh, of that too, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, especially with the three teenagers in the Volkswagen, it, you know, really. It, Two kids riding their bikes disappeared. You've got three teenagers um, who are the obvious suspects. So I think it's it seems to me pretty clear that they're going to be set if they following the case that they're going to be setting those kids up as the wrongly convicted. But then again, there's part of me that thinks, well, but that's too obvious. So it's probably going to be the the trash man who's going to be wrongly convicted, and then which is the whole point of the deposition in 1990 but i don't know i you know honestly i'm not looking at this as a as a case for me to solve i'm looking at it as they're going to take me through the case so i'm very so much I, trying I to solve this this case and uh there's a scene in the first episode it's the first time we meet steven dorf and it's him and Ali in a junkyard or whatever, and they are shooting at rats. And I, I'm just going to preface this, that I, I have 12 credits of film school, so I'm obviously an expert. But um, they're, they're shooting at rats and talking about hunting and things like that. And the, a, a fox comes out, and Dorf wants to shoot the fox, and Ali won't let him. And he, Ali tells a story about shooting a boar and how he likes a level playing field and someone who's on his level. He only got one shot at the boar. And then he talks about rats and how the, the rats are vermin that have wiped out the whole, you know, almost wiped out society multiple times. And the fox, he doesn't say a ton about just that he doesn't want to kill it. But uh, Dorf points out about how, you know, foxes are predatory creatures that that pick things off. And uh, so for me, when I looked at that, just based on the three kind of suspect groupings that we have, I thought the the three kids are the high school kids are the rats that that Ali sees them as the rats. He sees the cousin who's obviously some type of peeping Tom that lived with the family and we're assuming is the one that drilled the hole into the daughter's room to look at. He sees him as the boar which means I think he's the one that's going to be convicted. 
wrongly and put away and that the junk man is actually the fox because they had who probably who did it that's my guess because they have that conversation with him the interrogation and they both kind of connect over vietnam and and ali kind of looks kind of looks past him while dorf is kind of the one being like being more of the hard ass in the interview um so that that's just my my guess is i, I think it's going to turn out the junk man's the one who did it yeah that's that's way deeper and better theory than I had going for me. So we will, uh, we will have to delve back into this as the season progresses. There are six more episodes. Unfortunately, we're not going to be getting two a night, but uh, we will have to probably retrace this in about a month when it wraps up.